Cleo Friaf, and I'm here to share my culture, which is the Purépecha people. The Purépecha people are located in the state of Michoacán. Uh, there's a lake called Lake Pascuaro uh, in Michoacán, and there's numerous towns surrounding that lake. In the middle of the lake, uh, there's an island called Hanitio. And around the lake, there's numerous towns, uh, which are the Purépecha territory. And I decided to do this exhibit uh, in memory of my grandfather, uh, Adolfo Torres Gonzalez, uh, who passed away uh, about two years ago. And um, he was a very strong man and um, a very hardworking person. And I thought this would be a good opportunity for me uh, to share about my culture and at the same time share about my grandfather and where I come from. The Purépecha people um, actually had the second largest territory next to the Aztecs. Um, and the Aztecs attempted to uh, take over the Purépechas for many, many years, but they never succeeded. However, once the Spaniards came into uh, Mexico, they of course conquered the Aztecs and eventually conquered uh, the Purépechas. Um, now in, um, in the Purépecha uh, culture, uh, we continue to speak the language. However, um, there's an estimate of 200,000 people who are uh, currently speaking the language. Uh, there, and we are one of 67 indigenous languages that still exist um, in Mexico. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the um, town that I grew up. This is one of the many towns that surround Lake Pascuaro. And the name of this town is San Jerónimo. A lot of the towns in the area have picked up a uh, saint name uh, based on the Catholic religion. And for us, it has become Saint Jer Jerónimo, which is Saint Jerome. He was the patron saint um, of the uh, of literature um, and librarians and translators and encyclopedists and he is celebrated every 30th of September, so there's a huge party in San Jerónimo every 30th to celebrate him. San Jerónimo um, has some running water. Um, not every town, excuse me, not every house has running water. However, uh, most of the homes do. In addition to that, a lot of the streets are now paved. However, there's still some streets that are a pebble stone. In, um, in our town of San Jerónimo, um, it, this is pretty much the uh, dress uh, for women. This is very traditional, which has the really pretty embroidered tops. It is all cross-stitched. And if you look very closely, you can see the intricacy of just how tiny the cross-stitching is. That is the same thing for the apron up in the front. Um, and this um, apron, they're all hand done. What's always magical to me is that when you look at the back, you can't even see where it started and where it ended. And every single line in the back lines up perfectly, which I think it's, an, it's a great, great thing for women to be able to, to do that. I certainly can't. The other part of, um, of the dress is a rebozo. And a rebozo is um, it's a shawl. And it is not just for, you know, to look pretty and for decorative purposes, but this is also um, used to carry babies. It is also uh, used as pretty much a coat to stay warm and also uh, to keep the, um, the sun uh, from hitting you. Um, and it has also been used to carry bundles of, of anything. Um, so this is pretty much the, uh, the dress for it. There's also a, uh, an underskirt, which is, which is called a nahuas blancas, which could be pretty much probably in comparison to what a slip would be. Um, and there's also a nawas um, that go in that is an overskirt to the uh, to the outfit, which this mannequin doesn't have one. But in a few moments, I can show you what what one looks like. So this is uh, a nawas, um, and this is a child size um, skirt. So this is what goes over the nawa blancas, which is the slip. And as you can see, it's all pleated um, very intricately all the way down to, um, to the bottom. And to tie it all together in order for it not to fall, uh, we use what's called fajas. And these fajas are hand woven and they have in very different patterns and different colors. Uh, so they're pretty much wrapped around the waist area to make sure that your skirt doesn't fall off. As you can see, there's different types of aprons. 
uh, in different types of colors. And uh, usually they either have flowers or they have um, animals such as deer. So these are called rebosos, which are the shawls. And um, these, it, this is the, uh, the traditional shawl. Um, it is all hand woven. As you can see at the end of the uh, weaving, they have some really intricate ends to, to them. Um, they are used, um, as I stated earlier, uh, to pretty much to keep warm, to keep, sh the, keep shade, as well as to carry uh, bundles of items. And they're also used to carry babies. Um, here you can see a picture of my mother who was wearing a rebozo over her head. Um, they come in different sizes and typically they are blue, uh, gray, and some are white. One of the things that has happened through time is that they come with modern type uh, rebozos so it shows you uh, the modern ones that are currently being made, which is not as, they're not as intricate um, as well as uh, it's taking a lot of away from our traditional rebosos, which are, are typically uh, what we like to wear more than, than these. Uh, but these are becoming more popular. Um, they're also less expensive than the uh, traditional ones because of, they take less work um, to do. So this is a typical outfit for um, little boys and also men. It's basically the same um, outfit. And it has what they call calzones blancos, which is basically um, a long pair of pants. And also it comes with a matching top. And usually they end up having figures of the uh, Virgen de Guadalupe, as well as it always has a sarape, which is most people know it as a poncho and it comes with the hat and typically what the shoe is just a basic guarache or a sandal. So one of the things that are made in San Jerónimo is um, baskets made out of uh, palma which is pretty much a palm, uh, palm leaf and for ex this particular basket is used to for tortillas so um, there are different types uh, and sizes of the tortilla baskets. They work incredibly to keep all your uh, tortillas really warm once you warm it up. In addition to that, it's very traditional for us to have what's called a servilleta, which is a napkin and it's always beautifully cross-stitched, just like everything else, uh, with different uh, bright colors in, in the flowers. And uh, we use this to wrap our tortillas and leave them in here so they stay nice and warm. In addition to that, there is uh, what's called sopladores. And this is a really old soplador that my dad has had for a very long time. But this is used um, to get the fire going. Uh, uh, also, sometimes they use it just to fan themselves, but it's mostly used to, um, for, the, for fire. So in Mexico, in San Jerónimo, uh, although most of the homes have um, stoves, uh, most women from the old generation still cook uh, on fire. And this is a, an example of what's called a cazuela, which is pretty much a, a, a frying utensil. Um, it could be used also as a pot uh, to make different types of meals. And they use fire um, to warm things up or to even to, to do the cooking itself. They have them at different sizes um, and also uh, different heights. So these are cántaros, um, and there are water vessels, and they have them at different sizes. Um, these are more like children's size cántaros. And what they are used for is to carry drinkable water. Women uh, used to, not, not many go now, but they used to carry giant cántaros on their shoulders um, to go get water on a daily basis. Um, it's, um, the, the water is able to be stored in containers for, for days, um, and the smaller ones, such as the one away on the left with the yellow and black, that is something that also comes with a, um, with a cup that's removable, so people are able to pour themselves a, um, a cup of, of water. So these are called bateas, which is basically um, a flat bowl, and they're all hand painted. Um, typically the bateas um, come with beautiful flowers. However, there's also uh, pictures, uh, for example, the Lake Batscuaro with Hanitio in the middle, uh, as well as Los Viejitos. Um, 
The bateas come in different sizes from very tiny about this size to as big and bigger than the one that is shown here today. Um, they're usually just used uh, for, um, to be able to carry items um, to people, um, but most of the time they're used for special events. Uh, for example, they're taking special offerings to certain people that carry them in, in these bateas. These are molcajetes, and molca molcajetes are what I call the, our Mexican blender or food processor. It is used for pretty much what a uh, blender is used for. Uh, we're able to grind spices, we're able to make salsa in them. Um, there's always different sizes of them because we use them for, di for different things. Um, in the middle, you'll see what's called a metate, and that is uh, also used to grind um, food but it mostly is known for making tortillas. So what happens is when you have uh, the maize or the corn that is cooked and then if, when it's brought home, you use that uh, emetate to grind it into a masa or a dough. Uh, so women in, uh, in San Jerónimo, when they're making tortillas the old fashioned way, rather than going to a tortilleria, um, they use emetate um, as they're making their tortillas and putting them on, on the fire um, on a comal. This particular metate belongs to my mother and it was given to her by her grandmother um, about 60 years ago. Um, so my mom says that it, still, like, that it had already existed when she received it, so we really don't know how old that really is. Uh, but that is certainly something that we know for sure it's at least 60 years old. One of the um, traditions we have in, um, in the Purepecha culture, we have incorporated a lot of dances, and one of the most popular uh, dance is a Danza de los Viejitos, which is the dance of the old men. And it is um, a very traditional so uh, song and dance that they do at the beginning of every year, and it's basically a dance to the gods. Uh, in order to have a good year, a good harvest year for the next coming year. La Danza de los Viejitos uh, is usually danced by four men. Each one rep represents one item, which is uh, wind, uh, fire, land, and water. And it is danced in the beginning of every, uh, every year. These are uh, figuras de popote, which are basically little figurines made, made out of straw. And it's the uh, wheat straw. And um, when I was little and lived in Mexico, my brother and I used to make these for a living, and that's how we earned our money. So every day after school, we had a certain number that we needed to make before we could go out and play. So when I visited Mexico in um, 2005, I believe that was the year I was, um, I went back, my aunt was making some of them, and I thought, well, see if I can still remember how to make them. So I made most of these uh, while I was there on my trip. Uh, and they're, they're used on Christmas trees uh, during the Christmas holiday. Um, they also make them in, in much larger sizes. Uh, they also make them into wreaths, um, and they just have different little patterns um, that they make in order to, to sell them.